I'm a member of a number of photography and wildlife groups on Facebook and I get to see and answer a lot of questions from group members asking about long lens focusing or lack of it and very often the same question comes up time and time again because the problem is many group members simply don't understand that when you're hand holding a camera with a long lens it's impossible to eliminate camera shake no matter how strong and steady your hands are especially if your subject takes time to display the behavior you're trying to capture even breathing can make the difference between a well-focused image or a blurred one not many people realize that just a millimetre of movement at the end of your lens can be magnified 10 times at the subject focus point. Sometimes even those using a tripod adopt the wrong technique, such as this one. Today I'm going to show you how to remove or at least seriously reduce your chances of blurry images when you're using a long lens. Hi, I'm Ken Hatfield. Welcome to my Better Photography channel. The change up from mid-range 200 to 300 millimeter lenses to 500, 600 or even 800 millimeter super telephoto lenses is quite a step and you really need to learn some different techniques to get the best out of your equipment. I shoot with a Canon 1DX Mark III with a Canon 500 millimeter f4 telephoto lens with an option to use a 1.4 times extender or even a 2 times extender, giving me a maximum 700 or 1000 millimeter range. However, you need to remember when you fit an extender on your lens you will lose several stops of light so make sure before you fit an extender that you can still achieve the exposure you need especially in lower light. Also I found the two times extender is pretty good for static subjects in good light but not so good with moving objects in lower light. So let me show how I choose to set up and use my equipment for long lens wildlife photography. So let's assume you have the equipment for wildlife and action photography and now you have a decision to make. Handhold or tripod? Personally, from experience, I don't think hand holding is a very good option, purely down to the weight involved. My equipment weighs almost 6 kilos and will test the strength of even the fittest photographer. And there's another issue here, especially when photographing small birds. No matter how strong you are, you will always experience a certain amount of involuntary movement. As I said before, just a millimetre of movement from the tip of the camera lens may result in a couple of centimetres of movement at the focus point, resulting in poor focus due to camera shake. If you must hand hold, here's a tip to reduce camera shake. Don't hold the camera straight out in front of you. Turn slightly sideways, brace your elbow into your ribs and hold the camera firmly against your forehead. If you can, kneel down and use your knee as a resting place for the lens to give vital additional support. Here's another quick tip. If you have a tripod but don't have a gimbal head and you're looking for a steady elevated shooting platform, if you have a bean bag placed on top of the tripod, it's a cheap, simple way to get a shake free shot. Otherwise, look for any way to rest or support the weight of your equipment. Investing in a decent tripod is by far the best way to ensure you get the most from your long lens. Now for those who think, well that's an obvious way to improve your sharpness, well you're right, but I see so many people using a tripod but then using a poor technique. So I'm going to share with you the techniques that improve stability to give extra support that can give the difference between a good shot and a great shot. Now the type of tripod head you use is vital and whilst you can get away with a standard tripod head, I wouldn't recommend a ball head as you're back to potential camera shake. My tripod is fitted with a gimbal head which allows me free movement in any direction whilst firmly supporting my equipment. It allows me to point, focus and shoot instantly and most importantly accurately. If you use a gimbal you need to make sure that the camera and lens are perfectly balanced on the tripod by firstly securing the lens plate of the gimbal attachment bar. Then if the equipment is balanced the camera and lens should stay level without dropping forward or backward. If it drops, then unloosen the fixing bar and slide the equipment either backward or forward until the camera is perfectly balanced. Tighten the bar back up and then you should be able to move the equipment freely in any direction. The technique I use when I'm shooting is to make sure that the height of the equipment is comfortable and I'm not straining to see through the viewfinder. I place one hand on the front of the lens using only the gentle weight of my arm to steady the camera. I place my eye to the viewfinder until my forehead is applying gentle pressure to the back of the camera. These two points of pressure 
steady the camera nicely so I can apply gentle pressure to the shutter button for a shake free photograph. Incidentally, it's a good idea to train yourself to leave both eyes open as you look through the viewfinder as this allows you to be able to watch out for peripheral action that may come into the viewfinder that you wouldn't have seen otherwise. If you're focusing on one particular point, maybe a branch or a rock where your subject is often returning, you might want to consider using back button focus. You can find out all about back button focus in one of my previous videos by following the link above. If you're looking to photograph a particular branch or perch, pre-focus on the branch in advance. If it's a bushy area, then try and find a focus on a feature in the bush close to your target area. Find a light spot or an unusual feature in the foliage and focus on that. And these birds move very quickly. And if you're already focused on a point near the point of interest, then the camera won't have to work too hard focusing in on the shot. Always extend the legs fully and point the front leg forwards towards the subject for better stability. However, if you're on a downhill slope, point the two legs downwards, give you extra stability pointing downhill. If your tripod doesn't have a spirit level, use a centre post to judge the levels. And finally, don't extend the centre post unless it's absolutely necessary. I only use mine for fine adjustments. Now let's face it, any advantage you can exploit will result in better focus shots. Oh, one final tip. One of the hardest things to master with long lens photography is simply finding and focusing on your subject, especially birds in flight. At first, you'll find yourself scanning backwards and forwards, simply trying to find the subject in the viewfinder. This is something that only comes with experience and practice. So be patient. Don't give up. Just get out there and practice, practice, practice. It's a good idea for any beginner to try using your expanded focusing points first before attempting to track a flight shot using a single focus point. Another problem you may have is holding on to focus once it's achieved, especially if, if you're just using a single focus point. My tip is, if you're attempting flight shots into the sky, use all of your focus points. With any clear background, the autofocus will seek out and lock onto anything with a defined outline. As a bird is the only defined feature in the sky, you'll find that the focus should easily lock on and you're very likely to get a good, well-focused shot. So let's put all this into practice. I'm about to venture off for the first time this year to photograph wildlife in the North Yorkshire Moors, just a stone's throw from my home. These moorlands can be rugged, windy and desolate, but it's home to many species of birds and it's a perfect place to practice what I've just shared with you. So why don't you come along for the ride? So here I am at the Yorkshire Dales National Park, North Yorkshire, also known as God's own country and who's to deny that on a lovely day like today. Hopefully today we're going to get some uh, grouse, some pheasant, curlew perhaps, lapwing, uh, oyster catchers if I'm lucky and it's the season of love of course and maybe we'll get some action uh, with some natural behaviour for, uh, for mating behaviour. Um, I'm not going to linger on, I'm just going to go out and get my camera out and uh, following this I'm going to do a montage of images that I get on a day, hopefully if it works out. So there you go, that's the best of the action for today. Uh, not as good as I would have liked, but not a bad day. Not enough flight shots for my liking, but I did get some nice shots. And of course, the highlight of the day was the fight, uh, the pheasants fighting um, uh, on the road and on the moor itself. Uh, brilliant, excellent, uh, thoroughly enjoyed that. So get out, get your tripod working for you 
and get some great shots. See you next time on the Better Photography Channel.